Hello everybody. Uh, now today we will try to discuss that uh, how to calculate the Gibbs free energy uh, in case of the ideal solution. So ideal solution normally we understand that uh, in this case the thermal entropy we are neglecting and we are assuming only there is an configurational entropy. So to calculate I will try to show the calculation but before calculation we will we'll see that configurational entropy uh, that uh, they simply indicates that what are the different ways we can arrange the atoms uh, in the in the lattice sites. So therefore, this configurational entropy, this arrange number of arrangement can be represented like that. Uh, this using this expression N A plus N B factorial divided by N A factorial by N B factorial. But here N A N B is the number of A atoms and B atoms in this particular solution. And in one mole solution, we represents that N A equal to X A uh, into n small a and n b equal to x b into uh, n uh, small a, n is the basically Avogadro's number. Now there is a Stirling approximation we are also using, so logarithm of n factorial equal to n approximately equal to n ln n minus n and n a into k is basically equivalent to the universal gas constant. So using this expression we will try to see how what we can calculate the uh, the Gibbs free energy for the ideal solution. So, uh, for ideal solution, uh, we can we can see that delta S mix is basically the S2 because S1 there exists only one configuration of the atoms and that is the K ln 1 equivalent to 0. So, here we can see like that L1 equal to K ln 1 that is actually 0. So, S2 can be calculated like that K ln omega C u n F i g configuration entropy. Okay. Now, configuration entropy we can see that uh, omega C u n F i g equal to uh, n a plus n b factorial divided by n a factorial n b factorial. Now, you can expand further that uh, uh, this uh, k s2 equal to then s2 equal to uh, k into ln configurational entropy means ln n a plus n b factorial minus k ln n a factorial minus k ln nb factorial and therefore uh, this can be uh, calculated like that uh, that if you what you can the sterling approximation that ln factorial n is approximately ln n minus n here it should be n ln n so therefore k um, na plus nb uh, ln n a plus n b minus um, k n a plus n b and minus k ln uh, k k n a ln n a minus and plus um, k n a and expand further minus k n b ln n b and in this case uh, um, plus k n b. So, here we can see that uh, uh, here n uh, we are using the Stirling approximation L n factorial equal to n simply this is the approximation and n a k equal to r these are the more useful here we will try to utilize this one. So, therefore, this part this part this part will be balanced. So, here for here we can see that 
के एन ए प्लस एन बी एंड देन हियर एल एन एन ए प्लस एन बी माइनस के एन ए एल एन एन ए माइनस के एन बी एल एन एन बी ओके सो हियर यू कैन डू फर्दर ऑल्सो दैट यू कैन डू फर्दर कैलकुलेशन दैट हियर सो दे आर फॉर टेक दिस पार्ट एंड एन ए पार्ट टूगेदर सो हियर यू कैन एक्सप्लेन फर्दर के एन ए एल एन एन ए प्लस एन बी माइनस के एन ए एल एन एन ए रिमेनिंग पार्ट के एन बी एल एन एन ए प्लस एन बी माइनस के एन बी एल एन एन बी सो फ्रॉम हियर यू कैन डू फर्दर एंड हियर के इन टू एन ए के ओके सो एन ए मेक इट कॉमन सो एल एन एन ए माइनस एन ए प्लस एन बी बाई एल एन सो इन दिस केस एल एन एन ए प्लस एन बी बाई एन एंड रिमेनिंग पार्ट के एन बी एल एन एन ए प्लस एन बी बाई एन बी सो यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट के एन एल एन हियर एन ए वन प्लस एन बी बाई एन ए एंड हियर ऑल्सो के एन बी एल एन वन प्लस एन बी बाई एन ए सो दे आर फोर वी कैन सी दैट एन बी बाई एन ए इट्स ए बेसिकली एक्स ए प्लस एक्स बी इक्वल टू वन एंड द रेशियो एन बी बाई एन ए इज अ फ्रैक्शन इट्स इंडिकेट्स सॉरी एन ए इक्वल टू ओके यू कैन यूज दिस पार्ट ऑल्सो दैट एन इक्वल टू एन ए एक्स ए एन ए सो हियर एन ए इक्वल टू बेसिकली एक्स ए एन ए एंड एन बी इक्वल टू एक्स बी एन ए सो दैट इट मीन्स दैट इट्स एन ए बाई एन बी इज बेसिकली एक्स ए बाई एक्स बी एक्स एक्स बी इज बेसिकली इंडिकेट द फ्रैक्शन हियर सो के एन ए एन ए आई कैन से दैट एक्स ए एन स्मॉल ए लगर दम ऑफ वन बाई एन बी बाई एन एन ए दैट मीन्स दैट वन प्लस एक्स बी बाई एक्स ए एंड हियर ऑल्सो के एन बी एन बी इक्वल टू एक्स बी एन स्मॉल ए एंड लगर दम ऑफ वन प्लस एक्स बी बाई एक्स ए सो हियर कैन सी दैट के एक्स ए एन ए लगर दम ऑफ हियर एक्स ए बाई एक्स बी इक्वल टू वन सो आई कैन से दैट वन माइनस एल एन एक्स ए ओके प्लस के एक्स बी एन ए हियर ऑल्सो एन एन वन जीरो माइनस एक्स ए एल एन एक्स ए सो दे आर फॉर वी कैन सी दैट के एन ए वी कैन मेक एज अ कॉमन एक्स ए 
minus x a ln x a and here also plus term x b ln x uh, a, x b uh, here n b by sorry here uh, by n b sorry it uh, this will be n b by um, n a by b plus 1 here it will be n b. So, then this will be b x a by x b. So, it must be uh, x b. So, x b x b minus uh, here to do the minus sign. So, minus k n a is basically r x a ln x a plus x b ln x b. Okay. So, these are the expression we can see that S 2 is basically uh, this is equivalent to delta S mix. Okay. So, once you get this expression for the delta X mix that means the configurational entropy uh, for the ideal solution then we can finally make this one. So, delta X mix equal to K ln omega configurational entropy that we have already seen and here calculation equal to minus r x a ln x a plus x p ln x p. So, here we know that x a and x p that is a fraction it should be always less than 1. So, therefore, if it is always less than a logarithm of uh, less than 1 that component will be negative quantity. So, finally, delta s mix becomes the positive. So, here delta a s mix equal to positive it means that with this configuration entropy there is a mix of uh, entropy of the mixing is basically increasing that is uh, it is maintaining that things. So, there is increase of the entropy in, uh, in mixing. So, therefore, delta g, g mix. So, delta g mix of minus k into delta s mix or here. So, if you put it so it becomes uh, plus an r t into x a ln x a plus x b ln x b. So, this is the uh, uh, increasing of the, uh, the delta g mix that means uh, that means Gibbs free energy for the solution or maybe you can say the Gibbs free energy for the mixing is represented as a temperature and the mole fraction of a and b. Now, actual free energy of the solution this actual value absolute value of the free energy is basically g 2 in the state 2 is equivalent to the g 1 plus delta g mix. So, that we can express this is basically g 1 x a g a plus x b g b and this is basically delta g mix. And therefore, we can see from expression that temperature increases both g and g b decreases and the free energy curve assumes the greater curvature. It means that we know that at high temperature then delta g mix is uh, represented by the more uh, curvature. So, low temperature this curvature is low, but high temperature the curvature is uh, much higher. So, that means the delta G mix is actually in uh, uh, this with respect to the uh, negative uh, this value. So, delta G mix actually decreasing that means to it becomes reaching the amount of the total uh, change of the Gibbs free energy actually decreasing with increasing the temperature, but it is represented by the high amount uh, the higher curvature uh, uh, in, in case of the at high temperature. Now, once we calculate that what is the Gibbs free energy in case of the change of the Gibbs free energy in case of the ideal solution, now we will try to explain this thing, but actually the decrease in the G and G B with increment of the uh, temperature we have not considered the thermal entropy in that case only we have considered the configurational entropy in case of the ideal solution. So, uh, in this case if we consider that due to the thermal entropy of both the components and uh, we know that the change of the Gibbs free energy with respect to temperature that is represented by the minus s. So, that is the slope it means that uh, change of Gibbs free energy with respect to change in uh, with, with change in temperature is accommodated by uh, that uh, that decreasing of the entropy uh, uh, decreasing of the entropy, but this is the indicators of the negative slope. It means that always there is a 
with, with respect to the when there is a change in temperature or increasing the temperature the negative slope indicates there is a always decrease of the Gibbs free energy value. Now, if you plot its proper way the free energy curves actually not exactly that it touching with this at this these two points this is asymptotically converge in this particular point the curvature and maybe this can be uh, checked by differentiating the expression of delta g mix or uh, or g to find out the slope exactly at the point that when 100 percent composition a is there or 100 percent composition b is there so this particular two points uh, we, we can change it we can check it the the delta g expression of the delta g mix and we can find out the the slope at this particular point and we can observe that it is not exactly that exactly not touching to the this uh, this line so it's at as asymptotically converge this particular line but here you can represents the molar free energy for an ideal solution that it is a delta g mix is the this difference and here is the g a and g b this value gives free energy and this at particular composition mixing of the x a and uh, x b component that means <coughs> a and b atoms but certain ratio it is maintaining and this difference actually indicates the delta g mix that means change in the Gibbs free energy. So, at high temperature the gap will be much more at low temperature the gap will be less uh, depending upon the what is the and value depends upon the what is the values of the GA and G GAB. GA is basically uh, this point GA is basically we can say that it is the uh, molar free energy for the uh, component A and GB is the component B. So, this might not be having some difference between the GA and GB value. So, that is why it is not exactly uh, this line rather we make a slope because GA and GB values are different in these two cases. Now, once you understand the calculation of the Gibbs free energy for the ideal solution. Then we will try to discuss the effect of the pressure on the single component system. Uh, what we can explain this phenomena? So, you can see there is a different phases at different temperature uh, along uh, this temperature indicate along this direction y axis along the x axis this uh, pressure is increasing. So, and different phases are there. So, liquid iron one phase then delta iron existence of the delta in particular temp, uh, temperature and within a particular composition also uh, sorry particular pressure gamma iron this is the alpha iron and uh, epsilon iron these are the this alpha iron is basically low temperature phase and we can say and gamma iron it is little or delta iron these are the high temperature phase and all this equilibrium uh, this line. So, this at this particular point the and this particular pressure. So, this point indicates that these two phases gamma and epsilon iron are in equilibrium condition. So, similarly this any particular point we pick in this particular pressure at this particular temperature both uh, gamma iron and alpha iron are in equilibrium. And then once you cross the temperature or maybe you can decrease the pressure also the for a fixed temperature or other way if we keep the uh, um, temperature uh, pressure fixed if there is a reduction in the temperature then it is changing the phase from gamma iron to the alpha iron. It depends on the state of the temperature and pressure in this particular case, but so far whatever discussion we have done that is based on the, the constant pressure atmospheric pressure. Now, we will try to discuss what is the effect of pressure if there is a change of the pressure how this affect the equilibrium system uh, that will try to extract from this graph. This is the uh, standard uh, graph available effect of the, the existence of the different phases and their equilibrium conditions at the particular temperature and uh, pressure. Now, if you observe this graph here you can see that other than the atmospheric pressure the equilibrium temperature actually differs with change in the pressure definitely the equilibrium temperature will be changing with, uh, with the change in the uh, pressure for iron for, for single component system. You mean to say that this is the equilibrium temperature for this particular pressure. So, the existence of the two different phases. Similarly, if you increase the pressure the transition temperature actually this is the decreasing the temp transition temperature of uh, gamma iron to the alpha iron is changing with increasing the pressure. So, that means pressure having some effect at the same time pressure also influence the alpha and gamma that is interface the dip 
depressing the alpha and gamma equilibrium temperature and actually raise the equilibrium melting point temperature. So, here you can see the with increment of the pressure this equilibrium this this is the slope. So, equilibrium temperature is actually increasing between the liquid iron and the next phase gamma iron. So, with increased temperature, but other way other thing is that observe that that equilibrium temperature from two different phases gamma iron to alpha iron actually decreasing with increasing the pressure over the with increasing the pressure this this temperature actually equilibrium temperature actually decreasing. Even if you look into the phase from gamma iron to the epsilon iron with increasing the pressure there are temperature actually equilibrium temperature actually increases. So, we can observe the different trend either they can increase with increase of the temperature or they can decrease uh, with increment of the pressure. So, this kind of information we can get uh, from this particular graph. Here we observe that at very high pressure the if you see epsilon iron existence of the epsilon iron actually at high pressure. So, beyond 100 uh, kilo bar that existence of the uh, epsilon iron uh, is there and that is having typically the ACP structure and because at this high temperature this structure is more stable. Now, what we can analyze the uh, all these effects of the pressure uh, uh, with the change of the phase or maybe the equilibrium temperature from changing from one phase to another phase. At constant temperature the free energy of a phase can be represented like that uh, increases. So, Gibbs free energy increases uh, with fixing the temperature and that is represented equal to V because we know dg equal to this expression we have discussed uh, in the last class also. So, dg equal to V dp minus S dt. Now, here if temperature remains constant, so that means this part tends to 0, then dg by dp at constant temperature it equivalent to the volume the system. That means that Gibbs free energy one particular at uh, fixed temperature if there is a change in the pressure then definitely this this is influenced by the molar volume or the volume of the particular phase or that means molar volume or one, one particular phase. So, this means that the volume also having some effect to change of the Gibbs free energy with change in the pressure and this is the expression we can see the slope is equivalent to volume here the change of the Gibbs free energy with respect to the pressure. Now, we see that for example, two phases are in equilibrium and they might be having some two different molar volume. Now, their respective free energies may not increase the same amount since uh, by the at a particular temperature and that is obvious here we can from this expression we can say that is not necessary the their uh, molar volume um, uh, uh, if they are difference in the molar volume. So, therefore, by keeping the temperature as a fixed. So, therefore, change of the Gibbs free energy might not be the same it can be the different for a given temperature and of course, with change in the pressure if uh, molar volumes are different. So, therefore, with change in the pressure their equilibrium will be disturbed I mean to say that equilibrium uh, temperature and the equilibrium condition will be disturbed by changing the pressure if their molar volumes are not same. Now, we can explain in this way also suppose two phases are in equilibrium alpha and beta. Okay. Now, for one mole of the both dg alpha is the molar volume of the alpha phase dp minus s dt that means alpha phase s and dt. Similarly, dg beta, beta uh, this thing molar volume of the beta change in pressure and change in temperature and s the entropy of the phase beta. Now, if you see that when they are in equilibrium, so therefore, at equilibrium the change of the Gibbs free energy will be 0. So, that we have already seen. So, therefore, or same at the equilibrium uh, condition that means, uh, g will be the same, but dg change of the d, dg will be the 0 in this case. So, if it is dg equal to 0, we can say uh, this dg alpha equal to dg beta uh, from there we can get this expression. So, therefore, here you can see the del p by del t at equivalent temperature or equilibrium temperature is equivalent to the change of the entropy between these two phases and change of the volume of these two phases. So, 
we can see that if alpha and beta are in equilibrium definitely g alpha equal to g beta the but change of the uh, it means that and I at the same time the change of the trip will be the change of the Gibbs energy will also be equal. So, this equation indicates that if the change in temperature uh, of change in temperature of d t required to maintain the equilibrium between alpha beta if pressure is increased by d p definitely if increment of the pressure is there it is a some positive quantity that means some finite value if the change of the pressure in I, I, I mean to say that if there is a incre increase of the pressure. So, to maintain the equilibrium it needs to be adjusted that the temperature. So, that accordingly the temperature has to be changed uh, just to maintain the equilibrium condition for between these two phases. So, that is the effect of here. Now, we can do further simplified uh, this all this uh, state that G also the Gibbs energy can also be represented the difference of the enthalpy minus T s this expression we have seen before also. Now, G alpha equal to H alpha minus T s alpha and G beta equal to H beta minus T s beta. So, therefore, change of that Gibbs energy delta G equal to G beta minus G alpha. Now, if you can see that delta G equal to delta H the change of enthalpy minus particular temperature T and change of entropy delta S. So, at equilibrium condition delta G equal to G beta minus G alpha equal to 0 from there we can find out this equal to delta H minus T S equal to 0 or del H equal to 2 delta S. So, further we can modify the del P and del temperature uh, uh, the equilibrium temperature that is equivalent to the uh, del H. So, basically delta S we are representing is the del H by T. So, we put it in terms of del H by T equilibrium temperature into delta V. So, from this expression. So, this equation is actually known as the Clausius uh, Clapeyron equation and we can further utilize this equation just to understand what is the effect of the pressure on the uh, effect of the molar volume changes or effect of the equilibrium temperature changes. Now, here we can to some extent we can more uh, explain uh, that uh, effect of the pressure for the single component system. Uh, it is known that uh, delta G uh, with respect to temperature uh, at a constant pressure this is indicated by the uh, negative values of the entropy. So, uh, this is negative slope. So, therefore, it is mean to say that but entropy actually of a substance is always positive. So, therefore, to maintain that things delta G by delta T is negative it means that there is a decrement of the free energy of a substance with increase in temperature. This is the interpretation of that with increased temperature there must be decrement of the Gibbs free energy and that is expressed by the negative slope change of Gibbs free energy with respect to change of temperature at constant pressure. And this is also schematically shown by here also we can we have seen that figure A G A is a uh, there is a two different line the uh, uh, this uh, with respect to uh, temperature and say at this equilibrium these two phases are in equilibrium here and, and here two different phases phase 1 and phase 2. So, here we can see that suppose this is the transformation temperature this this corresponds to transformation temperature here we have written T equal to T r. So, one phase to another phase. Now, delta G should be greater than 0 if T less than uh, T transformation temperature. So, any temperature variable at this point delta G less than 0. At transformation temperature, so then both phases are in equilibrium. So, in that case delta G equal to 0. T greater than transformation temperature at this point delta G should be greater than uh, sorry less than 0. So, here it is greater than 0 and it is less than 0 for a particular phase and this is equal to 0 delta G. So, therefore, we can say that and uh, Mm. Delta G is represented the differences between these two at this particular temperature. So, these differences is the delta G here. Okay. So, phase 2 is stable than phase 1 if T greater than transformation temperature. So, in this case phase 2 is more stable because this is the lowest values of the uh, G also and this uh, the decrement of the, uh, the delta G value. So, that is why phase 2 is stable beyond the uh, that is T, T is the end at particular temperature when it is greater than transformation temperature. Other way phase, phase 1 is more stable 
in the when T is less than and uh, transformation temperature and in, 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 in this uh, here you can observe from the uh, from this particular graph. So, here phase 1 is uh, stable, here phase 2 is stable and we can see the lowest value of the Gibbs free energy in case the phase 1 at this point particular uh, this particular temperature and here is the lowest value of the Gibbs free energy uh, the this particular temperature. So, that is why so it depends on that particular phase. Uh, with reference to the transformation temperature will be the, uh, the stable and, and <coughs> to different phases. Uh, one phase that uh, uh, that boundary is basically decided by the transformation temperature. Now, we have already see the expression of the del P by del equilibrium temperature delta H T temperature equilibrium temperature and delta V. Now, this if you want to quantify the del P by del T at equilibrium temperature, this can be either positive quantity or negative quantity depends on the whether delta V is increasing or decreasing. That means, change of the volume is increases or change of the molar volume decreases based on that del P by del T equivalent that can be positive or negative. So, therefore, from there we can explain the different phenomena. So, for example, so, we have we consider the close pack gamma iron. So, close pack gamma iron one particular phase we have seen this particular phase diagram with reference to the pressure and gamma phase having the smaller molar volume than the alpha phase. So, therefore, delta V change of the uh, molar volume this gamma phase minus alpha phase is basically less than 0. Okay. But we know that delta H enthalpy uh, change of the enthalpy in this case will be the greater than because delta H gamma phase minus alpha phase the values. But here you can put the similar analogy that liquid has higher enthalpy than solid. So, in that sense that high temperature phase is having the higher amount of the enthalpy as compared to the low temperature phase. So, therefore, we have seen that gamma iron is basically high temperature phase and alpha iron is the low temperature phase. We can take the reference of the uh, this uh, diagram. Uh, here you can see that here the alpha, alpha iron is the low temperature phase and the gamma iron is the high temperature phase. From that sense, their enthalpy change of the enthalpy will be positive. So, here delta is positive, but change of the volume are negative. So, therefore, del P by del T Q is become negative that gradient becomes negative del P by del T Q. It means that when del P by del T is negative it means that an increase of temper at increase of pressure the it actually lowers the equilibrium transition temperature that means transition temperature from one phase to another phase and that is very obvious if we take the reference of this diagram. So, if pressure increases we can see between the these two phases. Uh, gamma iron and alpha iron with increase the pressure the equilibrium temperature. So, this equilibrium temperature actually decreases and that because there is a molar volume uh, for the gamma iron is less as compared to the alpha iron that is the reason here and we can we can see uh, from uh, that this that increased pressure lowers the equilibrium transition temperature. But other way also other side if we look into the interface of the delta iron and the liquid phase liquid iron if the, if the consider their equilibrium temperature is basically raised with increasing the pressure. But in this case the phenomena is different because due to the liquid due to the large molar volume of the liquid phase. So, liquid phase having large molar volume as compared to the delta phase. So, therefore, in that case so delta H will be the positive and delta V also positive. So, therefore, change delta P by delta T that uh, this gradient is basically positive. So, that means increment of the pressure is accommodated by increment of the uh, temperature. So, therefore, this equilibrium temperature is raised so that uh, with increasing the pressure and that we take the reference also similar we can take the reference of this diagram here between delta delta iron and liquid iron. So, here the there is a slope. So, this slope indicates that equilibrium temperature actually increases when there is a um, uh, that um, considering the equilibrium between the liquid iron and delta iron. So, this phenomena can be explained using this uh, equation. 
Now overall the effect of the increasing pressure actually is to increase the area of the phase diagram. So, uh, over the that uh, what is the it means that so uh, ok. So, over the area that means this zone area will increasing uh, with increasing the pressure, but it, which may not happen if everything occurs at uh, atmospheric pressure. But here if you beyond the atmospheric if you keep on increasing the pressure this total area is basically of a particular phase actually increases in general in this case. And increasing the pressure is to increase the area of the phase diagram at the same time over which the phase with the smallest molar volume is more stable. So, that is obvious one example the gamma iron uh, in this figure because gamma iron is the very close pack structure and it is having the smallest uh, molar volume. So, therefore, it becomes more stable and their area and the this the area in this diagram is basically increases with increasing the pressure. Now, we can see that among all these phases the epsilon iron having the highest density of the all three allotrop allotropes and we can see the consistent with the slope of the phase boundaries in the phase diagram. So, I mean to say that in this case the this if, if you phase diagram here you can see this is the highest density is much more. So, here in this case molar volume is much more and with increasing pressure their equilibrium temperature actually the actually increasing. So, equilibrium temperature increasing with increasing the pressure, but the more area is covered by the uh, lower volume of the phase and uh, here we can see that gamma iron is taking the lower volume and that is more prone to occurs relatively high temperature. Then you can ask if delta iron should have uh, this might be having the uh, higher area uh, cover uh, in this diagram should be should cover uh, in this diagram. But in this case if you see that delta iron existence of the delta iron is the very low, low pressure. So, therefore, that is why it is not able to cover up the large um, area of this thing, but other phases gamma iron, epsilon iron they, uh, they are especially gamma iron they are having the smaller volume and it is a is existence over the at high pressure. So, that is that is the reason it takes much more space area in this particular diagram. So, these are the all three inferences we can see just to analyze the effect of the pressure of the single component system. Now, we try to understand uh, that uh, binary coming back to the binary solution and what is the chemical potential in case of the uh, binary solution we will try to understand. Now, in this case let us start with this thing in a particular alloy. So, how free energy will change uh, of a phase when atoms are added or removed. Actually, when you try to understand the solidification behavior uh, it starts with the uh, this formation of the tiny particles and the in the process of the nucleation. So, once the crit when these particles uh, 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 the starting the creating the in the initiation of the solidification process and critical amount of the energy to form a stable nucleus is less at that time that keep on uh, we may we try to ex uh, explain the theory like that the atoms are gradually added to the solid phase and because solid phase becomes more stable in a in a liquid solution. So, in a liquid solution there is a the initiation point the starting the sol um, solidified com solidified particles there, but uh, when the solidification particles forms and in at that time the keep on uh, liquid atoms is adding to the the more stable solid phase and that is gradually growing and once it cross the energy barrier to form a stable nucleus then one complete nucleation form. So, that is it, this way we explain the theory of the solidification just keep on one atoms by atom adding to the solid phase. Now, suppose in that sense if we assume that small quantity of DNA mole amount is added to a system at constant temperature and pressure. So, therefore, the size, size of the system actually increases this amount DNA here small n a. Now, total free energy increases with the addition of this small quantity of the atoms at constant temperature pressure that become d g dot for example. Now, in this case we consider that DNA is very small enough. So, therefore, 
d g dot will be proportional to the amount of the a added. So, basically we can say that it is a small quantity and d g dot is depends the Gibbs free energy is basically uh, increase of the free energy is proportional to the what is the the quantity atoms is added to the uh, to the solution. Now, here we can see that d g dot equal to mu a into d n a. Now, this mu a is known as the constant of proportionality. So, from here we can say that it is also equivalent to the partial free energy of a or chemical potential of the a in this particular phase. It means to say that it is having some uh, potentiality to add keep on increasing the Gibbs free energy up to certain extent when it is added to the solution. So, that is the that is known as the chemical potential of the particular phase, but of course, this it depends on the composition of the phase specifically the composition that what ratio these two solution can be mixed up. And therefore, in this case DNA must be very small enough such that composition is not significantly changes in this case. So, and also at the same time DNA it is it, it should be small quantity such that it should maintain in a particular solution the ratio of the two different atoms A and B has to be maintained. So, that is why it is it is a small enough uh, <coughs> that added to the solution and it is accounting certain amount of the Gibbs free energy change with the addition of this small quantity of the A atoms to the solution. With this, but of course, when you making this equation change of the Gibbs free energy with the addition of small quantity of the atoms A to the solution, here it decides the what is that small quantity and that is represented in terms of the chemical potential of the particular phase, phase A in this particular case. But condition to that temperature, pressure and should be defined or it becomes constant and for this constant values of the, 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 the status of the other, co other component having some potentiality to add to the solution that is the n small n b. So, with this keeping as a constant this is the expression for the Gibbs free energy change. So, therefore, chemical potential can be expressed like that mu a equal to del g dot by del n a keeping this at, at constant values of the temperature, pressure and other constituent because in, in this binary solution the atoms the potentiality of the atoms B. So, therefore, G dot is basically here indicates the Gibbs free energy for the refers to the whole solution, but capital G is used the molar free energy and that is the independent of the size of the system. So, basically G dot when you are expressing is dependent of the size of the system means that depend the molar volume added to the system, but other cases G capital G we normally use the the molar free energy that is independent of the size of the system. Now, for a binary solution we can express the d g dot the mu a is the this is the addition of the element a, atom a and it is the uh, addition of the atom b such that it is a binary solution. So, therefore, there is a possibilities of uh, small amount of the addition of the atoms both a and b as per their chemical potentiality. So, here that is how you can mu a the chemical potentiality for the addition of the atoms to the solution and chemical potential for the addition of the to the solution mu b. Based on that we can see in general we can see that total in a Gibbs energy for the whole system can be increased like that V d p minus s t this, this expression we know d g equal to V d p minus s d t. But in this case if you want to take the very not keeping the temperature and pressure as a constant so, therefore, d g change of the uh, Gibbs free energy if we con effect of the temperature and pressure if we consider then we account this particular terms here V d p minus S d t apart from this as per the chemical potentiality the addition of the other elements uh, uh, in the solution. Suppose solution is having in general A, B, C and up to n number of components uh, to the system can be added. So, the as per their chemical potentiality. Now, if we one mole of the original phase constitute uh, maybe one x a mole a and x b of mole b. So, therefore, the size of the system can be increased without alternating uh, altering its composition. So, now if you take the it is a larger scale the significant amount of this there. So, then as per the common chemical potentiality this uh, the a and b can be added to the solution. But if we x a mole and x b mole is the define the for a size of the system for a binary solution. 
So, therefore, A and B can be added to the solution as per their correct proportion. So, therefore, D N A the elemental N A and D N B these both components the small uh, components of A and B amount of A and B should be added solution by maintaining their proportionality constant. So, D N A is to D N B should be maintained as per the X A is to X B uh, in this particular solution. So, once you do that in this way the size of the system can be increased one mole uh, without changing the their chemical potentiality values mu a and mu, mu b. So, therefore, to do this for example, x a mole and x b mole of b must be added and the free energy of the system will increase to by a molar free energy g. In this case, the free energy increased to the we are representing by their molar free energy that means in uh, independent of the size of the system. So, therefore, G can be also expressed in terms of the mu A x A mu B x B. So, here x A is the molar fraction and or, or sorry x A mole and x B mole and mu A and mu B is the uh, chemical potentiality of the uh, within the system for atoms A and atoms B individually. So, therefore, it represents that joule per mole that units of this thing total G per that means molar volume per unit mole we are representing this total amount of the uh, free energy of the system and this expression is as per the uh, chemical potential of the atoms A and B to the solution. Now, d g dot also can be represented like the change of the Gibbs free energy with the addition of the uh, small amount of the uh, elements A and B as per their potentiality can also be represented like that. Now, okay, that means uh, from here we can represent the from G dot whole system uh, the molar energy for the whole system to rather we represent the per unit mole what is the total Gibbs free energy of the system. So, now, it is known that G is also a function of x a and x b then what is the amount of the fraction of x a of uh, maybe relative amount of the x a and relative amount of the x b and the available in the solution and therefore, a mu a and mu b uh, can be obtained by extrapolating the tangent to the curve g curve. So, the sides and we can estimate the molar free energy uh, from the molar free energy diagram we can estimate the values of the mu a and mu b chemical potentiality. So, before that we can see that we have already calculated the for ideal solution delta x mix equal to r minus r into x a ln x a x b ln x b that we have already calculated. Now, Gibbs free energy equal to this is the s 1 uh, sorry uh, g 1 indicate and this is the uh, delta uh, de delta g mix the Gibbs free energy chain uh, for the solution. So, we can rearrange this equation such that g equal to x a into g a plus r t ln x a x b into g a r t ln x b. So, here uh, and from here we just compare it g into mu a x a and mu b x b and therefore, we compare it for the ideal solution. We can say that mu a equal to g a plus r g a plus r t x ln x a and mu b equal to g b plus r t ln x b. So, uh, this is true for the ideal solution and this is expression for the chemical potential for the atoms a in the solution and for the atoms b uh, this is the g b plus r t l n x b is the chemical potential for the atom b in the solution. So, this way we can find out the chemical potentiality in terms of the Gibbs free energy the of the atom a into uh, so depends on the temperature and the mole fraction in the solution. Now, how to estimate the chemical potentiality uh, chemical potential of this in a binary solution uh, sorry in this case we are in, in we are talking uh, we are talking about the uh, ideal solution. So, ideal solution how you can estimate that chemical potential. So, here uh, you can see that uh, uh, free energy and chemical potential energy curve is the basically this is the G curve the total free energy curve is a composition A and solution B it is a 100 percent A at a 100 percent B the total B, but here in between x B indicates the that uh, in between the x A and x B certain percentage of A and certain percent of B at this point indicates. So, therefore, with this composition if we make a tangent with this uh, on this curve the it is representing here here the intersecting this line mu A and mu B. 
So, this indicates the poten chemical potential of component A and this indicates the chemical potential of component B. So, here mu A and mu B varies with respect to the composition of the phase. For example, if the phase are different here in this point, so tangent can be different here and we can draw the uh, line here. So, this indicate the chemical potential of mu B and this point indicates the chemical potential of the uh, mu A. So, it means that mu A mu B actually varies the chemical potential actually varies depending upon the composition of this particular phase. It means that what are the ratio of the composition they maintain in the solution based on that we can make that there is a variation of the mu A and mu B. So, the expression we have already seen the part R T ln X A and R T ln X B this is the quantity and uh, that indicates with deviation from the G B that actually indicates that mu b because mu here mu b equal to g b plus r t ln x b. So, uh, so here this indicates the mu b because both are negative quantities with respect to the g b the deviation the minus r t ln x b that indicates the total values of the mu b this particular point. So, although we are talking this is the ideal solution, but uh, uh, the is a we are trying to discussing the chemical potential for the binary solution, but in this case we are considering this is the ideal solution in the sense that thermal entropy part we are neglecting for the ideal solution. So, there uh, in that case, but only ideal solution there is a the mixing the two components uh, A and B and uh, in this case we are considering only the configuration, con, um, configurational um, entropy and based on that we estimate that these are the values of the chemical potential uh, for the uh, atoms A in the solution and chemical potential for the atoms B in the solution. And of course, these values of the chemical potential mu A and mu B it is entirely depends on the composition of the phase and that is obvious from the graphical representation of the variation of the G and with respect to the uh, composition that means the A and B. So, therefore, at different values this uh, composition can be different. So, maybe in the slope is if G A equal to G B. So, there might be possibility that that potential chemical potentiality can be the same mu A equal to mu B when G A equal to G B and because G A equal to G B means this can be curved something with the uh, this curve and, and the tangent should be the one. Uh, horizontal line. So, therefore, mu a mu b should be equal in this particular case. So, I think that is all uh, uh, for this um, uh, uh, this class and maybe next class we will discuss the the all this kind of the calculation of the chemical potential or Gibbs energy in case of the regular solution. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for your kind attention. Mm -hmm.